Hey everybody. Hi. Hey, it's Lisa and Peter with Juicy Sacred Living, and we are coming to you live from I-95. I-95. <laughs> <laughs> Look out because of this. That's it. Um, in Florida, Peter's driving, so I'm I'm paying attention to this, and he's paying attention to the road. But uh, we wanted to keep our promise to show up at 12 o'clock on Fridays, no matter where we are or what we're doing here at Juicy Sacred Living. And um, today we're talking about Juicy Sacred Sundays and bringing the spiritual into the physical and what that really means um, to us. We've certainly had lots of years, 30, we're working on our 33rd year. <laughs> Can you believe that? That's uh, awesome. Lots of years of experimenting with this concept. This is a, a conversation that Peter and I used to have ages ago. Mm -hmm. Like literally 33 years ago. Yeah, when we were talking about spirituality and, and being in bodies and that there's a reason for us to be in bodies and that, that the spiritual is physical and the physical is spiritual. In fact, everything is spiritual. Yeah, which kind of comes from, it doesn't kind of, it comes from an indigenous understanding that everything is sacred. Right. Everything. Right. So when you hear a, a, a Lakota person saying their prayers, they always end with all my relations. And that means the animals, the sky, the water, the rocks, the trees, the mountains, that everything is related to us. And we are related to everything. We're all part of each other. The ancestors. Yeah. The air we breathe, the atoms in everything that we touch and take into our bodies. I mean, that everything is part of this incredible um, experience and, and that therefore everything is sacred. And um, we've, you know, we've seen, we've seen spirituality in its not embodied form. <laughs> we've seen plenty of that in the world, um, you know, ranging from you know, pop spirituality, like kind of the new age sort of movement and uh, religion, organized religion sometimes, um, you know, that there, there are plenty of intellectual ideas about what spirituality is and lots of posturing about how spiritual somebody is based on some ideas, <laughs> some intellectual, you know, concepts, but do they live it? You know, do, do we live it? And that's really the the testing point is, you know, does the rubber meet the road or is the rubber above the road? <laughs> well, and that's, that's been something that I've always um, really questioned is so much of the um, spiritual tradition is about um, escaping or going to the next life. And I've always felt like we come into bodies for a reason. It's to experience this life. And that physicality and recognizing that we're part of everything to me has always been so important because um, it just made sense, even as a kid, that how could I be separate from everything around me? We're all made of the same, we're all made of the same stardust, we're all made of the same impulse. And if you believe in a beloved creator, then we're all part of this amazing experiment going, inside, going on inside of a beloved creator. So recognizing that we are all we are all part of the same beautiful amazing spark and and life is is such a freeing and um, beautiful idea and it also brings us back to the why should we treat things with respect question because it's all we're all related well yeah respect acceptance too you know, acceptance, people, people say unconditional love and like, this is the highest spiritual ideal. The highest spiritual ideal is unconditional love, which, you know, by definition means love with no conditions. So that's complete acceptance. And that is my litmus test. How spiritual am I being? Am I, am I completely accepting of something that's in front of me? Like, am I, um, am I able to be with somebody who has a different political point of view and still love them? accept them completely, you know, without needing them to be different, without needing them to agree with me, without needing them to change. Um, can I be in front of somebody who is making a decision to, to do something that I disagree with? Um, can I accept them? Can I love them? You know, can I let that be okay? Um, and and it's, it's a tricky thing because, you know, spirituality also means setting boundaries and saying no and standing up for what you know we believe at the same time but at 
in the grander scheme of things, that acceptance of another person's free will is is the primary, you know, gift of being human. You know that we have that. Right. Well, it's it's part of the rules that we came in with. We have free will, which means that we can we can take actions that are against what maybe um, is in our best interest and other people's best interest. But that's the that's what we come in equipped with, and, and I think that when we're faced with other people's free will acting in a way that we wouldn't choose, that maybe is even against what we believe in, and still holding love for them is is really that litmus test that you're talking about, Leash. It's, you know, reconciling that what I believe and what someone else believes can both be valid, mm-hmm. yeah. and, and not withholding love constricting myself because someone's doing something that I don't appreciate or care for. Or condemning, you know, to so that it makes them separate from our worldview. It's it's a really it's a deep concept if you start feeling into it and thinking about it. Like if we're really meaning to bring spirituality into the physical, if we really are embodying spirituality, it's asking us to be very It's asking us to be certainly different than we are trained because we're trained with all these judgments. Um, I think it's training us to be accepting of things that we might consider due to our training to be outside of ourselves or different than us and understand there are different expressions of being a human being but that we're still connected, that we're still all human beings. Well, and, and when you, of course, acceptance starts with self-acceptance. Right. So, <clears throat> like in in the uh, in my inner inner tribe work, the, the self-healing technique that I teach in the Daughters of Earth program, we understand that self-acceptance is where it all begins. Self-acceptance is where we begin to learn to accept somebody else, you know, who has a different point of view, or um, who maybe does something or says something that we don't necessarily agree with um, and that's just here's big little slowdowns I see. periodically that's just kind of the that's the way it goes you know the more we can accept parts of ourselves that maybe we have some judgments about or discomforts about um, the shadow <laughs> you know the unconscious parts of self then the more able we're able to extend that acceptance to other people well, and, and I want to talk about that word you just used, other people. I, I think of other people as connected to me still. But when I start thinking of people as the other, then I can start to disconnect myself. And when I look around in the world, that's what I see is our, our capability for, for doing beautiful things is, is based on our recognition that we're all connected. But the things that are that I consider horrible, like and, and profit over people's lives and, and, and seeing someone as totally separate from me so therefore I can do something to them because I've created that separation inside of myself that to me is where people are not paying attention to spirituality and all the great traditions of religions teach us to see ourselves as, as a whole to see us as, as all the same coming from the same place, created by the same spark. Yeah, and but talking about that and thinking about it and living it are different things. Absolutely. You know, actually living it. So so our goal is, and our mission is, you know, spirituality brought into the physical, bringing all these wonderful awarenesses that we have and all the wonderful experiences of the bigness that's beyond the physical, all of the the awareness of the, the incredible wisdom and intelligence and magic, you know, of, of the universe here. Like all these wonderful concepts that are out there, you know, here, bring it here, <laughs> bring it, bring it into the physical world. And if we can do that, then how different the world could be, how, how, um, how acceptance can change, you know, a relationship, 
how acceptance can change a person's life, being accepted for who they are. Um, uh, I'm thinking of lots of examples here. Um, and one that I can think of is that as parents, you know, for those of you who are parents out there, you know, you, you hope that your child will grow up to be um, themselves, right? To be who they are meant to be and not fit into some homogenized idea or some box that we want, you know, them to go into or the society wants to go into. Or at least we felt that way, that it was our intention um, to raise children who were themselves, who were independent thinkers and who questioned and who um, wanted to, you know, we wanted them to determine for themselves what was right for them. And, and you know, we, as now we have adult children, we get to experience them making choices that maybe we would not want them to make or that we would prefer <laughs> that they didn't make or that we would not make ourselves. And yet they are autonomous beings they are who they are and they have their own mission and their own purpose and their own direct sovereign connection you know with with life and so it really falls on us to be so deeply accepting you know of, of who they are because we love them <laughs> we love them so much well and and we our stated goal and Lisha said it but I want to reiterate it was to raise children were capable of and felt empowered enough to live the life that they want to live on their own terms, even if we didn't like it. Right. And that to me is, is so critically important because I feel like as parents it's so easy to box our children in and to ask them to be not who they are and then create resentments and, and pain that doesn't need to be there. Yeah, in fact, I think of parenting as like some of the, the best spiritual practice you can get <laughs> if you're willing to go there, if you're willing to make it a spiritual practice. And, you know, certainly as, as our children have grown up into adults, there's this constant process of letting go. There's this constant process of, of an opportunity to apply spiritual understanding and spiritual principle into daily life. And, you know, that's that's been our walk is to do that as much as we can possibly do it and, and sometimes it's not easy mm. <laughs> sometimes we are challenged to very core beliefs of, yeah. of who we are and who we think our children are and the challenge is to inhabit that spiritual in our bodies and to sit with and it even if it's hard even if it takes discussion and and, and disagreement and um conflict resolution to get there to stay in that space until we can hold that for mm -hmm. for our children so that they can be the person that they are meant to be mm -hmm. regardless of our desires or aversions <laughs> to their path. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and really that can be applied to anybody in our lives you know like we were talking about before people you know political differences of opinion or different ways of life, different ways of believing, different ways that we see the world to be accepting, you know, of another point, another's point of view. Um, and of course, you know, we really do get tested when it's a relationship that's very dear to us. And, and that's, that should be, that shouldn't be exempt, you know, <laughs> those are the relationships where we need to be applying it the most. So, um, Let's let's tell them what we're gonna do. We're gonna be we're gonna be doing something really special starting this Sunday. Yes, we are. Or is it this Sunday? Or is it no? It's after the first after the first of the year. Right. Yeah. So. You, you have me to say? Yeah. You no, said, okay. I, I want to pay attention to the road, guys. It's moving a little faster now, so I really need to. Okay. Keep my eyes on. Yes, we want road. Peter to pay attention to the road. So we're going to be um, doing something new. We are going to be hosting something called Juicy Sacred Sundays uh, starting uh, after the first of the year. We're going to be having a regular Sunday um, offering where we invite you to come and 
refill your cup with some different kinds of talk around embodied spirituality, around experience, around this crazy thing called life. Um, we have been on the road now for, since, well, together since September of 2017. For me, it'll be two years in April. And um, we have had some very juicy, sacred experiences, we're telling you. And uh, it, this is going to continue. We, we are here in Florida now for the winter in, into March. And um, speaking and teaching and creating and writing and uh, getting Daughters of Earth year two up and running. But then um, we are bringing this new thing in this year because this Juicy Sacred Sundays because we are really seeing a need. Um, we are being asked a lot how we do what we do and how we live. And we're being asked to, I think by life, I think we're seeing a need and a call for people to have a place to come to where they can, they can get some sanctuary and some solace around real life issues with still a context of spirituality that, that is inclusive and loving and kind and in union. <laughs> That's the whole point of Juicy Sacred Living is the union, is bringing spirituality to earth and bringing the physical with together with, with the ethereal and feminine and masculine together and, you know, the whole brain, like bringing everything together, coming into wholeness and oneness is really our mission at Juicy Sacred Living. And we have been having a lot of fun. We've also been learning a lot. We've been growing a lot and we want to open it up and share it with you in, a, in another way. Um, not everybody can make it to our retreats and not everybody can make it to our workshops and that kind of thing. So if we hold something on every Sunday, GC Sacred Sundays, then it's a way for you to be part of our of our journey. Uh, we invite you to, to be part of our journey and uh, to explore this, this world that we're evolving so quickly into. Uh, where spirituality is being asked to come back into the physical. No more intellectual spirituality, guys. It's, it's about living it. <laughs> it's about embodied experience of connection to all that is. Yeah. yeah. So, stay tuned um, to the space. We'll make our announcement of uh, how to connect with us to enjoy the Juicy Sacred Sundays in the next week or so. Um, we're super excited about it. We're excited to have an opportunity to to roll out a, a red carpet and have you join us more often and more regularly than we have in the past. And um, we we'll look forward to seeing you there. Take Anything care, else? everybody. No, we will see you next Friday, no matter what's going on. Right. We'll see you at noon <laughs> next Friday. Next Friday, right and here. Please Jesus join Jesus. us and let other people know that we're doing this. It's pretty exciting to uh, to be making this commitment and to to be bringing something that we're being asked to bring into the world to the world. Yeah. To you. Lots of love. Bye bye. Bye.